Uh, let's talk in a simple way. So today we are going to start with the domains and the very first domain I'm going to talk here is I'll go with the classes that is various classes we have. We all know that the first class I'm picking here is special purpose domains. So last week I also talked about it. We have the general observation classes, correct? If anything which is not fitting into the general observation classes, those we will be keep them separately. One of that is going to be the special purpose domain and another one is going to be the trial design domains. These two domains will not fall under your general observation classes, correct? So, but I'm taking the special purpose domains class as the first class to discuss because these are going to set up the tone for all the domains. Among this, the very first domain, that too, I can call this as a parent domain because it will be source. It is the key source for your entire SDTM. All right. And that domain is nothing but demographics. This is my first domain. All right. Remember, I think in the SGTM terminology, we clearly discussed this. Any domain name in your SGTM will be always of two characters, correct? Whatever I have written here is going to be the label. Label can go up to 40 characters, but the domain name always are going to be two characters long in the SGTM, which is nothing but DM in our case, right? So this is going to be the domain that I'm going to discuss now. All right, now I'm asking all of you guys, help me with one thing. What DM domain will deal with? So first I'm talking about the domain details. My domain is going to be DM. Now I'm asking all of you what it will deal with. Why you call this as a primary domain? Anyone? It deals with the, with the subject. Subject oh. details. Okay. First, someone saying that subject details. Others, yeah. Randomization. Okay. Something randomization details. Okay. What else? Characteristics of subject. Subject characteristics. Both details are characteristics remain same. Okay. Dates like randomization. Okay, randomization dates you want to capture. Anyways, randomization someone mentioned the details of the randomization. Okay, fine. What else? Consent date. Sorry? Informed consent date. Informed consent date. Indirectly, you all guys are talking about, you know, the names of the variables. But my question is slightly different here. I'm interested why you call this as a parent domain? Why we need to discuss this at the beginning? Why we should give this as a preference? That's where my question is. Because this data contains all the enrolled subjects. All the enrolled subjects. Mm -hmm. Yeah, without the details of the subject, we cannot uh, get uh, to know to whom we are talking about. All right. Okay. So can I say that I'm conducting this entire trial to see the safety and efficacy? of a study drug, but the safety and efficacy on whom it is reflecting on the subjects. Indirectly, my study is completely happening on basis of my subjects only. Subjects are very vital. These are the ones who are driving my entire study. Am I correct? Without subject, there is no study, right? Recruitment of the subjects and recruitment of the meaningful subjects, a proper subjects who are participating in the study is going to decide the fate of my drug, right? So subjects are everything. So to capture all subject related information, to talk about all the details of a subject, we need one domain, we need one data set. And that data set is nothing but the demographics. Am I right? All we are looking is, I just need the information about all the subjects, correct? All right, so, so one is going to be your DM, 
So it is purely talking about subject related information because you know that all the subject related information in your CRF will not will not be at the same place. Am I correct or not? CRF last week I have shown to you what you are going to have there. I'm going to have a lot of pages in that, right? So there is a page or one or two pages will talk about subject related information, not completely, correct? There are few pages which will talk the talk about adverse event information. There are few pages will talk about your inclusion and exclusion, correct? So there are a lot of pages that are available in the CRF, right? You are going to annotate the CRF to get your ACRF to understand what variables you required in your respective domains. And each week, suppose if I have subject information in that page, where this data should go. I have something called, <laughs> for an example, subject start date. That is nothing but when the first time subject has taken the drug. That is what I have written there. Where and all it should go. It is actually part of my drug accountability CRF page. So this drug accountability CRF page I'm using for this particular one. So this will go to your exposure domain. And this also will go to your DM domain. First exposure, correct? So how these details should go will be part of your ACRF. You simply do the annotations there, boxes. You create the boxes. After creating the boxes, you are going to write your spec specification. And the CDM team is already going to convert your CRF into raw data sets. So what and all you have now? I have CRF, which is collected as it is. On top of CRF, your CDM, your clinical data management team already created your raw data sets. Once the raw data sets are created based on the CRF, you do your annotated CRF that you in the sense, someone from the clinical team, clinical programming team will do that. And then you also have the specification Excel, which is going to help you how to do the coding. You're going to use all these four as the inputs and you're going to start the coding. That is the coding part. Now the question I have here is, my data is coming from various places. So what and, all, what and all the data that is coming and how I can fit that particular data here? That is what we are discussing, right? The CRF data will go to multiple SDTM domains. So what domain will deal with what kind of data is what our discussion for today, all right? Now, first we are talking about the most important one because it deals with the subject. I'll simply say that this domain includes set of variables. Can I say that that describes each subject in the study? All the subjects, right? They are assigned, unassigned, everything who are qualified, who are disqualified, irrespective of that. This particular domain includes set of variables that describes each subject in the study. The moment I look at this particular table, I can understand who and all participated, who and all are screen failures, who and all got randomized, who and all got respective drug information, what is their details, every piece of information, I'm going to have it. Remember, it is a parent to mine. All right. One of the key factors you need to remember is in SDTM, every domain follows certain structure. Structure in the sense, how I can store my data over there. This domain structure is very, very important because based on that, you need to see the data. Based on that, you need to store your data. The structure of this domain is only one record per subject. One record per subject. Can someone please explain me what exactly I'm talking about here? What do you mean by one record per subject? We have only one row per subject in the data. One row. Why you don't get more than one row? Or why other domains will have more than one row? Can anyone explain that if possible? Patients have many adverse, adverse reaction. Okay. Whether do you have to record in different rows? Mm -hmm. Then those also they will take in another. Uh, those explanation 
DM is a one required per subject because this contains the kind of information that is not going to change over time. Like the the age, their ID. All right, wonderful. And the dates. True. Uh, I got another answer from uh, Ashwini saying that subject is unique in a study. True. Let me go with this. Let's take it on a simple note. We all studied in the colleges. In our college, you will be given, there will be more than one Murali, correct? Murali Krishna can, there are people with the same name called Murali Krishna. Maybe surnames are different, but on a whole, my first names are going to be most of the people, let's say Murali Krishna, right? But how do you, how your college or how your admin team will identify you? Let's say they want to give a hall ticket to you or they want to announce your results. They want to see your fee structures. If, for everything, how, how they are going to recognize? They are going to give you one, your student ID. Correct or not? They won't treat you with your name, but they will find all your information with your ID. Can I say that ID is going to be the unique one? No two students in the class will have the same ID. Yes or no? No two students in the entire college also will not have the same ID. No two students in the last 10 years of all, let's say your college is there from past 10 years. In the past 10 years also, is there any sub, is there any student who has the same ID? No, right? It uniquely represents a person. That uniqueness is required. Same is the case here also. Because I'm dealing with the subjects, each subject here uniquely I'm going to identify with the subject ID. I'll give you one subject ID. The, with that particular subject ID, I started recognize you throughout my study. All the details against you, I'm going to keep it only under that particular subject ID. If the DM has more than, you know, two, two subjects has, let's say one subject, double one, double one. This is the subject ID. If this double one, double one repeated twice, what is happening? Can I say that my demographic data or my student data is having the duplicates? Can I have the duplicates here? Will the duplicates allowed? If I have the duplicates, which is meaningless, correct? So having the duplicates in any table which is uniquely identified, identifying any entity is not allowed. That can be a student ID when it comes to your student data set. That can be a bank account ID when it comes to your accounts. That can be loan ID when it comes to the loans, right? That can be credit card number when it comes to the cards, right? All these are unique only, right? No two, let's say that can be doctor identification number, TIN, that can be hospital identification number, NPI. You take anything. Right, but anything which is uniquely identifying, anything which is representing your particular product, that should be unique. There you should have only one record. Am I correct or not? But when it comes to someone said adverse event, yes. Let's say for the same subject, double one, double one, on day one, he, when he entered into the study, he got headache. After 10 days of his start of the study, he suddenly go to rashes, right? So during the last week of the study, he got dizziness. But all these are against to this particular person only. And these are meaningful. One subject can have more than one record here. It is meaningful. But here one record, his details are unique. His birth date, I cannot have two birth dates. On the same day, my age should not have two numbers. I cannot code different sex values today and tomorrow, right? I cannot code different races today and tomorrow. Am I correct or not? So this is supposed to be unique. Anything which is uniquely represent the, uh, representing the subject should have only one record. That's the reason in the entire DM domain, I'm going to have only one record per subject. So one of the common check that you need to do right after completion of your DM domain is going to be, see, are there any more than one subject ID which is exists in my table? Clear? All right. Now, let's talk about this a little. Yes, how do you know? I give you one, a simple, uh, what I can call it as, table. Let's say I have a DM table. 
So in this, each subject I'm identifying based on the subject ID. Right, I have all other details as well. I'm asking you to do the validation. During the validation, I'm asking you all, how do you know that there is more than one subject? Now, so we understand that based on the structure, it is very clear that there is only going to be one record per subject is allowed. It includes set of variables that describes each subject in the study, followed by it also going to talk about the label as well as the domain information. Now, pretty simple thing. As per the latest implementation guide, I mean to say that latest in the sense that we are using, as per the SDTM implementation guide version 3.3, .3, we have 30 variables, guys. How many? Three zero. Now the task is how to remember them, how we can, you know, go ahead and discuss about all this. Let me tell you in a simple way. Let's first group the variables. First group the variables. Okay, first. I talked about who and all participated in the study. I also talked about what and all the processes involved in the study. First, under who and all participated, who is going to initiate the study, guys? Who will initiate the study? Sponsor. Wonderful. When a sponsor initiated the study, what and all sponsor is responsible for? Can anyone principal tell me? Investigator. Okay, principal investigator, all the investigator details. Okay, one thing I can say is, let's go in one by one way. First, the moment he is responsible for the protocol when it comes to the document, because he is the one who will be coordinating with your principal investigator, IRB persons, medical research associates, and make sure that your protocol is ready. Every protocol or whatever the study that he, have initi he or she initiated, that's supposed to have a study ID. Am I correct or not? How do I identify the study? Uniquely, if I want to identify a study, I need to have a study ID. So that is the first thing. That is how to identify a study. I can simply say that study identifier. The same sponsor is responsible for where this study is supposed to happen. Can I say that site details? The same sponsor is responsible for in which country he is doing it. My sponsor can be coming from different countries, but where exactly the site is, this particular study, study is happening, country details. That is what is going to decide whether it is going to be a multi-center or multinational, what kind of study it is, where my site is exists, country details. The same sponsor is responsible for bringing your investigator, so investigator details. Can I say, all these will come from the sponsor. All of you accept that? And if I want to start my study, these are all primarily required for me. Yes or no, guys? Everyone accept this, these four parameters here. Move on. Second, I'm following a SDTM and I'm preparing the domains. So, C disk is responsible for what? What and all C disk going to provide to me? C disk provide only one thing to you. What should be the domain name you can use? Nothing else. Nothing else. Correct? Or any derivation part. Correct? So simply I can say that C disk is responsible for providing me the domain details. What domain I should follow? What label? What is going to be the name? All these things. Okay, subject has sponsor is there. Sponsor has recruited the subjects, correct? Subjects has come to the picture. Now, what and all subject related data, if he or she is going to be a subject, what details we generally collect from the subject? Uh, anyone tell me what details you collect from the subject? Age, sex. Wonderful. The first thing is I going agree. to be, okay. First, you are going to collect age, all age details. Okay. Second thing, someone said that height, weight, all those, nothing but the vitals. But vitals will not part of the domain, but okay, no problem. But still we'll collect here. I'll keep that here. Race. Number three, number, ah, correct. Someone said that race. 
someone said that sex then ethnicity ethnic then birthday birthday details then any existing diseases or medicines they are taking medical history yeah then anything can i say that at a, at a very high level these are the details the subject we collect this data from the subject only subject can provide these details am i correct am i correct or not only subject can provide this only series can provide this only sponsor can provide this yes or no so far all of you are good on a lighter note we are writing we are, we are not doing anything fancy we are just writing on a lighter note okay process is initiated what is the first process the first process is going to be screening can i say all these details of the subject you are going to collect during the screening phase only am i correct or not when a subject has come for the screening only you are going to collect all this for all the eligible candidates you are going to get the details about the informed consent that is nothing but you ask the subject to to go for the enrollment how the subject can enroll by signing your informed consent when the subject signed it consent sign date anything else required from here when he or she has signed it then he enrolled he or she enrolled only the enrollment signed date is required for me nothing else is required <laughs> done this is after this after the enrollment randomization happens correct randomization uh, what happens in the randomization let us say that it is going to be a, a, a crossover study design or even if it is going to be a normal your parallel study design in either of the cases during the randomization i am going to create two groups intervention group control group intervention group people are going to get the study drug control group people are the one who are going to get your placebo correct so first thing is here i am doing a small work and that work is going to be whoever completed the enrollment let's say this is what my screening is once i complete the screening right after this particular one i'm just going ahead with the randomization here is what randomization is the one which is going to create a branching uh, anyways when i go ahead with the the trial design domains i talk this in detail but in a simple way i can say that this is the place where randomization is happened after the randomization the we will go ahead with the treatment phase but in the treatment phase what will happen is i'm going to have two at least i'm going with the two different groups now the two different groups are going to be i'm going to have let's say this is going to be my drug a or let's simply say that it is going to be my control group who is going to get the placebo correct this is going to be my intervention group this intervention group is the one who is going to get the original or i can say that actual study drug so now i can say that these are the two different paths that we have created all right each path i'm going only on a lighter note here each path will be call it as your trial arm what is that arm arm stands for right this is nothing but this this arm is nothing but the treatment arm that is what is going to be the treatment the subject is going to get so the subject who assigned to this one let's say this is control group is nothing but drug a this inter sorry control group is nothing but the placebo this intervention group is going to be something called drug a that is these guys go with their treatment after the treatment they will go ahead with the follow up the end is going to be follow up so either of them 
or both of them should go to the follow up only. Now the thing is, so this is a simple story where I can talk about what exactly happened into the subjects in the study. Correct? This is going to be follow up. And this one is there not the control group and the other one. Maybe I can simply just put this particular one as a, this one is going to be a treatment, right? So this is going to be a treatment. Now the question is, after the randomization, someone will be assigned to the control groups and the remaining people will be go going to the intervention group. And whoever going with the control group, then they will go with the follow-up. Whoever be done with the intervention group, after that, they will again go ahead with the follow-up. So if I split this, if I split this as the individual elements, one group of people will start with the screening followed by the treatment followed by the follow-up. Second group again started with the screening followed by your second treatment that can be placebo or your uh, drug A or drug B or whatever the drug it is followed by the follow up. Can I say that here I can see two different paths. One path is the first one. Maybe if I give a, give a color coding here, can I, can I do like this? Look at this and tell me. This outline, maybe I can go with something called in blue itself and you can see that. Now there are two groups. One is going to be a blue color one and another one is going to be the orange color one. All of you accept that? Two paths. So each path, I generally call it as a arm, treatment arm. Now, after the randomization, the subjects will be assigned to the respective arms. Each arm is going to have a complete description that one you can call it as a arm, that is treatment details. Simply I can call it as a treatment details. Under the treatment details, there are two things. Whatever you can see here, this is a planned treatment details. Always it is, it is expected to have all my planned treatment should be the actual treatment. There should not be any deviations. If any deviations is there, you need to capture it, right? So you are going to compare them by saying like this, hey, these and all going to be my planned treatments and these and all actually happened, actual treatment details. We can always plan, but there are always going to be the surprises. If there are less surprises, your study is going to be good. If there are less deviations, your study is going to be good. That is the actual expectations. First of all, do you understand what happens in the randomization? Subjects will be randomized to the respective treatment groups. Each treatment group, you are going to call it as a arm, treatment arm. The treatment arm, there are two things again, planned treatments as well as the actual treatments. Is that clear up to this? Any questions? So we are just going with the flow. We are not doing anything fancy. We are just going with the flow. And if you are not able to remember this, if you see last week, we have created a flow, correct? Can you see this? Protocol, implementation, collect the data as per CRF, followed by this, then you have SGTM domains, blah, 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 correct? The same flow only. This is flow we have discussed multiple times. Here also we are going to discuss one more time today. All right. All we are going to see is what is the process. We are just sticking to the process. We are not doing anything fancy. We try to stick to the process. According to the process, we keep creating the variables. Can I say that up to this, all of you are comfortable? Any questions or anything you feel difficult, please tell me. All good? Uh, so there will be multiple arms during the whole phase of uh, one clinical trial, right? Yes. yes. That depends on how many drugs that you are testing. Suppose if you're going with the comparison of two different drugs, then one drug, existing drug, one trial arm, new drug that you are testing, second trial arm, placebo, third trial arm. 
let's say there are only going to be two one drug i'm just testing directly one drug directly for the control group or uh, intervention group one drug which is placebo for the uh, the control group that's it if it is a crossover trial if it is okay good question see crossover and parallel study design anyways i teach that in detail in your uh, uh, what i can call it as trial design domains but anyways the question has come the only difference is going to be if this is the one if i want to keep it as a crossover also this diagram will not change this flow will not change the the thing only one thing which is going to change is control group nothing but the placebo so in parallel study design whoever is assigned to the placebo they keep getting placebo only throughout the study let's say my study is for the 5 weeks all the 5 weeks this guy is going to get placebo only whoever is assigned to the drug a that is going that is the drug that i am actually testing then throughout the study all the 5 weeks we will give drug a only to this particular guy this is your parallel when it comes to your control sorry when it comes to your crossover it will be different first week let's say the guy who is assigned to your drug a we will give the drug a to him then we will have washout period where completely this this drug has to come out of his body then we will give placebo again because it's a blinded right we don't know we define the washout so again we'll have the washout followed by drug a followed by placebo followed by washout it keeps going on how many how many weeks are there those many weeks it's supposed to happen the only difference is here throughout the study the same drug here that is nothing but your parallel study design when it comes to your crossover study design it is slightly different so that the difference is going to be the person is going to get that particular drug the person is going to get that particular drug as long as that is allocated to him right oh sorry i put this reverse it will be keep changing we'll be having a washout period between them and we keep changing the drug that is how it will be changed okay. but this this treatment arm will not change make sense thank you wonderful any other questions here all right so now randomization is done randomization what we did here we just assigned to them to the different groups nothing else we did we haven't started so now treatment is started now treatment after the randomization treatment so under the treatment what and all you are going to get when we start start date when it is end end date right start date details there are two dates which is representing this i'll talk about that end date details okay after the sir, treatment sir, i have one doubt in the randomization we don't give any drug to the subject no yes? no no and uh, i have one doubt in last explanation mm. okay, can you please go to the with that image once please the yeah. washout period and uh, drug one like placebo and uh, drug drug a mm -hmm. so uh, when it is happen like treatment. it is drug a washout placebo in the treatment uh, completely okay. in the treatment okay 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 yeah and some studies some studies uh, this is exclusive not for every study there is something called run in period remember this run in again i'll talk about this uh, especially when i go with the concomitant medication domain i'll talk about this but simple on a lighter note i'll give you this see what happens in the screening let's say i have 100 subjects 100 subjects entered into the study but during the screening 20 subjects are screen failures they have not met your inclusion criteria or they have met your exclusion criteria because of them you drop them 80 after this i suppose to start with the randomization but some people what they will do is they will include a run in period here not every study again i'm telling to you what happens in this run in period is 
we started giving the drug, not the full dosage and all, because we don't know the dosage details at all yet. How much dosage we should give? What is the dosage frequency we should give? That details we don't have yet. But still what we do is, we will give same drug to all the subjects who are participating in the study. For all the 80 people, we'll give the same drug. Let's say drug A, with some limited amount of the dose. We will see how they are responding. Some people have zero response. That is, their body is not at all responding to the drug. Some people moderately responding. Some people responding normally. Who and all have zero response to this particular drug, including them into my study, can I say my efficacy is going to get affected? Because the drug is working for the remaining people, but for these people, I give this particular run-in period for two weeks or three weeks of the time. During this entire two weeks and three weeks of the time, I, I haven't seen the person is responding for that. Correct? This is going to be, this is simply going to be, I can say that this is, these guys are not responding, though my drug is working it is going to have effect on my efficacy. Correct or not? Because these guys are not responding. Including them in the trial is going to affect my efficacy. And my efficacy will come down. Second category. For everyone, we give placebo. For everyone. For placebo is nothing but a fake drug, right? It's a simple sugar pill, right? It's just a peppermint. Someone, because psychologically, they will be in an assumption that because they don't know we are giving a placebo to them. We are, we are only giving a drug to them. Psychologically, some people will be started reacting for this placebo also. The main intention of placebo is going to be the psych considering the psychological effects, right? Mean to say they are overreacting. Am I correct or not? I haven't given a drug, but they're reacting for that. This is also going to affect my efficacy because this is going to increase my efficacy levels. Keeping this guy as well as keeping this guy is going to affect my efficacy. What should I do now? These subjects, I should drop it. Out of 80, let's say five people are comes under the category. So only 75 will go to the randomization. These five subjects will be further filtered out, further drop out in the run-in period. So to answer your question, I'm telling this. There are studies in, in, in there are some studies where between your screening and randomization, you are going to give the drug to the subjects to further filter down. This period, you can call it as a run-in period. Make sense? Questions? Yeah, this is this happens only during phase one, right? Yes, exactly. Okay. Yes. Yeah. All of you are clear with this? Wonderful. Any questions? Can I wait or can I proceed? Okay. So, yeah. go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Lakshman. Uh, filter IP in the Mali next to e study crossover study, yes, sir, under uh -huh. run in period in the Ravata. Ledu. Run in period in the Ravata, Walu, Nakwalu, fit over and tells in Gapati, Manolik as a continue chain, while dropouts on you. Every other run in period chain, the wall crossover, yes, sir. Ah, okay. kad kad kadu. Crossover and it treatment. Man, in that treatment ke alla ledu. Randomization na avale dalaki. Okay. Because screening I pindi. Okay. Yaar, my mandi screening kuchhero. Ni ne jas na nante asal treatment original treatment start je dan karna munde same drug ni konto dose je ilkistman. Asli lela okay. respond out na reni. Yaar na asal respond out le dan kundi. Vela ke treatment start je na waste. Vela asal pattern neno drop che hasta. Upur konto mandi placebo is na ikara. Placebo each and respond to both Naru. Yellow Lenti, wrong Mali, Yellow Lago, wrong if wrong if you can send the Nidhi was Southern Mata. So, ye then in a cut pedam or lana treatment and as a little treatment to put start out the crossover a parallel and the treatment kill the start out the treatment and the Kuntaman the running period chain and Rakada could have all can a filter of the run and the Kavadu. In Kavadola, the filtration and the Tondo, running period made with Kuntail a chess coach. If you can see wrong or Sundan Dari the other one, Kapudu. This study level chess called Edi. They are fine with that. And the Kuni studies money in Japan. Then I doubt, sir, and efficacy run in period check with the man of the post in the gather. They are okay with that. They are okay. One. Hey, guys, let me repeat the question which Lakshman asked. Hey, Murli, let's say if they don't do any of this run in, 
then my efficacy is going to be affected, right? Absolutely, it will get affected. It is affected. But what is the percentage? Very minute, very minute, right? In general, not every study is going to follow running. Some studies, they really want to go ahead and they really want to filter out the subjects properly. They want to select your subjects very precisely. In that particular case, only they will go ahead with the running. In all other cases, we'll go normally fine. There will be plus or minus 5% of the considerations, everything will be there, right? So what will happen is, that's the, that's the role of your statistician again. Statistician will pitch in, I haven't do run in. There will be always plus or minus 5% of the changes. That changes is going to include while doing the statistical considerations. If the efficacy endpoint is going to be like, you achieved an efficacy of 92%, just I'm telling to you. He will say that it is going to be 92 plus or minus 2%. There is going to be a plus or minus 2% deviation. That is how they are going to do it, right? Not every study require a run-in. There is nothing wrong in going with the run-in. For the accurate filtration, you can go ahead with the run-in. Am I making sense, guys? All of you, any questions on this? <laughs> But man, treatment look well in the water, crossover and is on the other. Like, crossover or parallel study design is nothing but how we are doing it. You want to give the same drug to the subject all the weeks, or you want to shuffle your drug. That doesn't, once the person enter into the treatment, right it is only about how we are giving the drug and collecting the details that can be crossover that can be parallel suppose if it is a parallel study design your question will not have any effect correct but yes, crossover having, right? hmm. having said that having said that tell me what is your question now let's say if it is a crossover study so what is there in your mind and if a placebo a group chain next like study drug or group is there తెలుస్తుంది <laughs> తీసుకునేటప్పుడు డేటాని యాజ్ ఇట్ ఈస్ గా కలెక్ట్ చేస్తే మనం దాన్ని ఎక్స్పోజర్ యాజ్ కలెక్టెడ్ అంటాం ఈసీ డొమైన్ అంటాం స్టాటిస్టిషన్ ఏం చేస్తారంటే ఈసీ డొమైన్ నుంచి ఈఎక్స్ డొమైన్ ని ఎక్స్ట్రాక్ట్ చేస్తాడు ఆ ఎక్స్ట్రాక్ట్ చేసేటప్పుడు ఈ ప్లాసిబో రిలేటెడ్ స్టాఫ్ అంతా డ్రాప్ చేసుకుంటూ వస్తాడు హీ విల్ ఓన్లీ కన్సిడర్ హౌ ద సబ్జెక్ట్ ఈస్ రియాక్టింగ్ ఫర్ ద స్టడీ డ్రగ్ నాట్ టు ద ప్లాసిబో దో ఇట్ ఈస్ క్రాస్ అవర్ దో ఇట్ ఈస్ గోయింగ్ టు బి ఆర్ పారల్ స్టడీ డిజైన్ ఓకే అండర్స్టాండ్ సర్ అర్థమైంది క్లారిటీ వచ్చింది వండర్ఫుల్ గైస్ ద సెకండ్ క్వశ్చన్ హియర్ ఇస్ లెట్స్ సే ఐ స్టార్టెడ్ గివింగ్ ద ట్రీట్మెంట్ వన్ వీక్ వి ఆర్ గివింగ్ ప్లాసిబో అదర్ వీక్ వి ఆర్ గివింగ్ ద study drug right so the efficacies will be different right for the study drug and for the placebo right if there is any drop in the efficacy or if there is any surge in the efficacy how do you do this first of all we will not do this for the individual weeks number two even though if it is a double blinded study if it is going to be a crossover study design we have adopted we collect the data for the entire exposure that you can call it as exposure as collected as it is we collected we keep it in a domain called exposure as collected then your statistician is the one who is going to derive exposure the original exposure from the exposure as collected because this guy knows what is placebo when we have given placebo to whom and all we have given placebo he will do all the considerations and create the ex domain this ex domain is the one which will go for the submission but to support the ex domain we also submit the ec that is only as a supporting thing but ex is the one which is going to define your original study drug and related efficacy and safety 
So that's where even though you are going with the placebo and everything, while calculating the efficacy and safety endpoints, statistician is the one who is going to take care of that. Any other questions here? Is uh, running uh, mandatory for uh, oncology? No. Uh, that depends again, I'm telling to you. That depends on the study, that depends on the sponsor, that depends on the methodology that you are going to follow. Running is not mandatory. That's the reason I started with a word called, it's purely depends on the study. Okay, okay. Questions? All right, wonderful. So where we are? We have sponsor, we have series, we have subject details that we are going to extract from the subject, what details you can get extract during the enrollment, what happens during the randomization, because of that, what data I'm going to get it. So once treatment started, what will happen? Then after the treatment, I'm going to have a follow-up. Treatment is completed, we'll ask the subject to come for the follow-up. When our subject for the come for the follow-up, that is going to be the last time he's supposed to enter into the study that is subject completed that is study is completed now can i say that this is end participation details when is the last time subject enters into the study but tell me there are exclusions what are the exclusions ideally the subject started from the enrollment any subject traveled all together till the follow-up the subject did a great job. He complete he or she completely participated in the study. That is, he or she completed the study. Good. What happens if someone completed the treatment, not appeared for the follow-up? I have appeared for all five weeks of the treatment, right? But I haven't come for the follow-up. I skipped the follow-up. Can we exclude it? It's not excluded. The thing is, his end participation date is not going to be the follow-up date. His end participation date is going to be the last time he attended the treatment. So what I mean to say is the end participation details for the subject will be changing. It is not supposed to be the follow-up for every subject. There are exclusions. One, the subject may not end, they may not come for your follow-up. In that particular case, he only completed the treatment but not completed the study. Am I correct? This is one milestone. This is another milestone. This milestone is decided only for the people who have completed the treatment. This milestone is going to tell you who and all completed the study, complete study. So the end participation details will change from subject to subject. Majorly 80 to 90% of the subjects, it is going to be on the follow-up, but need not to be the same for everyone. One of the exclusion is they haven't come for the follow-up. What else? I have a question here. In case hmm. the, the, the subject did not appear for the follow-up, hmm. the specification document will say if, the, if they were absent for follow-up, hmm. use the date from the last treatment as the end participation date. Hmm. Will it say that? Exactly. What you said is right. Okay. See, End participation date can be anything that can be of your follow-up date, that can be of the last treatment date, or that can be of some one week, any one of this. We don't know. So what we do is take all the dates from the exposure domain, I take all the dates, some the visit domain, take all the dates. My end participation date is the one. Refer all your study domains, all your input data, when which is going to be the last time the subject appeared in the study that will become my for end participation date that can be follow-up that can be treatment that can be one of the uh, week one or week two or week three or week four any one of the week the subject entered that might be the last one why that's where i'm talking about the exceptions someone else ping me here i think bagya subject death maybe maybe that is going to be the end participation date exactly adverse even happen because of the adverse event, subject is dead. So his death date is going to become my end participation date. Right or not? Exception. Correct or not? All this I have to take it right. Right? So subject end date is going to be decided on 
adverse event, a natural death, or I can say that all the exceptions. That is the another thing. Then, one started from here, we ended with all the things. In addition to that, Sedesk is also going to talk about, that I put it here. Sedesk is also going to talk about few things. One is domain details. Second thing is, in DM, I can identify a subject by using the subject ID, which is unique, fine. The moment I go to the adverse event in the example that I have given, one subject can have more than one row. More than one row is possible there, correct? More than one adverse event, yes. More than one concomitant medication, yes. 10 test lab tests I have done, 10 records in the lab, right? Vital signs I am taking for every visit. Let's say I have 10 visit, 10, 10 records I'm going to have it under the vital signs. How do I map it then? How do I distinctly identify the records? So for that, what CDISC mentioned is, hey, in your DM domain, in your DM domain, you can identify the subjects by using the subject ID. But the same subject, if I, subject ID, if I use it in the other domains, one subject ID have more than one, but I need the unique thing to map it. I need a unique thing to deal with the subjects. So it encourages to go with additional derivations to make sure your data has the data integrity. To maintain the integrity, you are going to perform additional derivations and create variables. Right? Additional derivations to create the variables. Those will be comes under your CDISC guidance. Okay. So can I say that these are the total variables that you are going to have in your entire study? Everyone? Yes or no? Right? Now, can we discuss the variables now? Are we memorizing anything here, guys? All we are doing is we're simply going ahead with the flow. Is the flow understandable to all of you? Yes. Now, can we go with the variables? All right, let's start here. Okay. So first thing I'm going to have is going to be the, what is going to be my variable? Any label for that, what is the label? First, only these two will go. Okay, then we'll go with the remaining ones. Variable and its label. Okay, first, ideally speaking, guys, we should follow the order. I mean to say that implementation guide, they will give the order in what order you have to create them. But that order, you don't need to memorize. It is impossible to mem memorize that uh, order. You only remember go like this. While creating your domain structure, while creating your data sets, there we can create the structure. There we need to follow the implementation guide order. I mean to say which variable should come first. If you try to remember in that particular way, it would be very hard. So don't go there. Don't go there. So for now, what you can do is just go ahead with the flow. As per the flow, remember them. So first, sponsor are defined ones. Elizabeth, definitely I'll share this Excel sheet. Otherwise, it is difficult for you to refer, right? I'll share this. I'll also share the notes. That is each variable notes also. I'll share it separately. Don't worry. Thank you. Yeah. So now, first sponsor related stuff. This is sponsor. Under the sponsor related stuff, what we have, first one is we decided that it is going to be study identifier. To identify a study, we are going to have a variable called study ID. What is that? I'm going to have something called study ID. The label for this is study identifier. You call this as a study identifier. And I also mentioned about something. For every variable, you need to remember few things. What is the data type? Because it's a SAS, right? I need to mention the data type. I also need to mention what is the core. I also need to mention what is the rule. A rule or rule? 
maybe you can go ahead with this and you can see under the C disk introduction, you can see that for every variable, there is going to be a role. This role I'm talking about, role. Okay, now help me with all these details. Okay, let's go one by one. What is the data type, guys? Is it a character or numeric? I have only two. Character. Why character? <laughs> Study ID can be anything. It need not to be a number all the time. First thing, correct? Number two, Study ID can be like X, Y, Z, hyphen, one, two, three, anything they can use it. Or even if it is going to be a purely number, let's say they want to store like this, zero, 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 one, two, three. This is my study ID. But when I store it as a numeric, all the leading zeros will be gone, right? So how to handle it? I need to store this as a character, then leading zeros will be available. But as per the CDs, because this one is going to be decided by the CDs, as per the CDs, it is character. The supporting why it is going to be character, the examples that I have given. Okay. What is core? Core means I three values. Different. No, no, no. Okay. Required. Require. Required, except, uh, required, expected, and permissible. Require means it must be part of it. Right? It, this variable should be part of my table. This variable should not have values. Now, should not have missing values. Now, the question is, why you are saying it is a required? Why? You need to know the reason, right? Without study ID, if ah. it is missing, we can't. Which study it belongs to? It doesn't make any sense, correct? That's the reason you're required. You need this as a required. Now, what is the role? Role in the sense? Is it an identifier or right. it is a topic or it is going identifier. to be a role? Identifier. Why? It is uniquely identifying something. My study it is identifying. So identifier. Done. Sponsor is the one who's supposed to give me the other detail as well. What is the other detail the sponsor has to give? The site details. Where exactly my site is available. For the site, the sponsor is going to give you site ID. This you can also call it as study site identifier. Right? Okay. Can I say it's a character or a numeric? As per your SGTM, it is going to be character. Now I'm asking you, is it going to be a required variable or is it going to be expected or it is the other one? What do you think? It will be required, right? It can be multi-side. Yeah, it is required. Because if I'm going with the more than one, I should give from which, which site it is the data has been collected. So required. Now, what is the role? Identifier. Okay. I cannot take this as an identifier here. The reason for this particular one will be, though it is uniquely identifying something, but these details are actually giving by who? Who is going to give these details to you? Sponsor is the one who is going to get this, give these details to you. Correct? Right? Second thing is going to be, these details is purely you are going to collect or you are going to record from your site ID, from your sponsor only. Sponsor is going to register your study ID. That's where it will become your identifier. When it comes to the site ID, he can have multiple sites. So which site it is, he is going to give it to you. It is not uniquely identifying it. Am I correct or not? It is an identifier, but it is not uniquely identifying it because I have more than one site ID also. If it's a multi-center study, I have more than one. Correct? So which site is this information is collected? Your sponsor has to give it. But study identifier, Wherever it is, 10 sites, 20 sites, study ID remains going to be the same, right? Once it is identified, it is going to be uniquely identified your entire study, right? So since you're collecting this particular information from your sponsor, you're recording it, you're collecting it. Collecting is nothing but the record. It will become a record qualifier. Make sense why it is record and why it is identifier there. Everyone, right? Then. Sponsor is the one who's supposed to give me the 
country details as well. Uh, as well as first we go with the investigator. We'll complete it and we go there. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Mali explain just the record identifier and all that. Okay. Tell me. Ah. Okay. Lakshman. If you do, man, you have two sites. Okay. Two sites. Lona Lakshman. Two sites. Ki two IDs. Sunta. Let us say first site is IN. 101. Second site number MO, IN102. Site line na one day, na study key, what a study ID PE123 na study ID. Ikadagani, PE123. Ikadavar coke and election. Idemo site ID, Idemo study ID. Ikadavar mik Adamanda? Okay, sir. Ah, Ipudu identify a role a puristamo and day. They are in a unique representation, unique identify this. This study matam lo na study edi martha da. Change us. Na study matam lo na side edi smartha naya le da. Konta data emo one zero one inch dechko na no konta data emo one zero two inch dechko na. Ida identify chas me. Kani unique identify chas na? Le da. Right. So, and e details ever is there, Miko? Sponsor, they can change. Uh, sponsor, they can collect. Yes, Kunta. Edena information, unique represent Chekunda. Unique represent Chekunda. Second, sponsor, Nincho, wherever Nincho collect Chess Kunta Namu and Day. Danik Mano Ricard qualifier is there. Okay. But, Idi Woka method. Second method in the day. Kunitiki no unica identify chalak about Kunitiki. Unica identify chalak about you. But still, Kuni variables end and throughout the study, what they then represent just it. I went to go to Miku next to the mind such a push up than in Naku group ID untundi, reference ID untundi, sponsor defined identifier lundi. What a cut coach the Kamali what in identifier variables enter. Ante Pratidaniki, ye variable ki, ye role ivali and edi, make a seed is first to decide chess assistant. Naku SDTM law, DM munta, and a mude mood identifier variables. Only three unta. In case you got identifier variable and nanic lady, make it a any recorded. Though what may identify chastanagani. Alla Yinduko and Nanik in explanation is the non make. Make a the election in Japan. Guys, let me repeat why and how. It is identifying. Remember, guys, the moment we go with the implementation guide for each variable, what is the core, what is the data type, what is the role, which is already defined by your C disk itself. If I go with my entire DM domain, I'm going to have only three identifier variables. Only three. Other than these three, Anything else is representing some identification. Still, we go with the other roles only. I started giving you the reasons for that. I'm started support. I'm giving you the supporting why these are identify. These are calling as a record qualifier, though those are uniquely identifying something. That is the reason for study ID because I can have more than one study ID. Right, so that is the reason, though it is going to be using for the identification purpose, but you are collecting this information from the sponsor. That is the reason you are calling this as a record identifier or record rule. You understand what I'm trying to say, guys? These roles will be defined by your C disk itself. All I'm saying is what is what the support I'm giving here. Is that make sense? Any questions? Wonderful. Ah. What is the third one? I need to go with the investigator details. There are two investigator details we are going to incorporate here. Every investigator is going to have a investigator ID. That is nothing but your yeah, investigator identifier. Then every investigator have the name. INVNM that is going to be your investigator name. Right now. So the first one is going to be investigator identifier, the second one is going to be the investigator name. 
Now you guys tell me what is going to be the data types. Character. 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 Uh, core, tell me the core. Required. Why it is required? Bhagya saying core Expected. and Arun saying, Arun saying. Permissible. 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 Okay, Arun saying required and someone else dropped me a message saying it is going to be expected. Now tell me how you decide it. Is the one who is going to decide whether that See. should be present. See, name, name, it can be like a um, permissible, but uh, ID, it's uh, like it's unique, right? Uh, so mm -hmm. that's that is required. That is where we need to go. One thing. See, this require core all this from the submission point of view. I'm the reviewer. I want to see what study ID it is. It mandatorily required. From which site, national or multi-center, all this required. Who is the principal investigator? What matters to me? Let us say I'm the principal investigator. I don't want to disclose my name. I don't want to disclose my name. I have my right, right? My name, I don't want to disclose, but Knowing the investigator name or knowing the investigator ID is required to approve your study or is, is it required to approve your drug? Anyone? No, no right? No, no, no. Nothing to do with this drug. Exactly. Keeping this variable or not whose who's, uh, decision it is? Sponsor. Sponsor want to share these details? He will say it is a permissible. Sponsor is going to decide exactly. So, permissible. Permissible. Make sense? Right? Why it is permissible? Because what, what it is going to do with my end thing, but sponsor want to share these details. Hey, the, here are the guys who conducted this particular one. Here is the principal investigator. Okay, fine. Have it. But I'm not going to use anything because this, this is not going to impact my approval things. So it is permissible for me. Wonderful. Uh, what kind of uh, role it is? Record. Done. I'm going to ask the investigator to share the details. He's the only gun, one who can give the details. Wonderful. Uh, this guy has to give one more to us. What is that? Country, right? Country is also which, which, in which country it is happening. Country is not the subject country. Always country is nothing but investigational, investigational site country. This one, country details. Country. Country of investigational site. Label reminds going to be the country only, but it is actually country of your yeah, where it is happening. Hmm. Now tell me, data type anyways, no changes, character. Tell me the core. Required. Wonderful. Because I need to know required. geographic location. Country is required. Yes. Yeah. Record. Who is going to give this? Sponsor is going to give it. That's the reason it is going to be required. Can I say all the sponsor data is done? That's it, right? That's what we discussed here, right? Sponsor related data. This is what sponsor related data done. What next? During the screening time, what and all the information you are going to collect from your subjects? So go back. Okay. Uh, first of all, what do you collect from the subjects? Subject name is there, but subject name is not going to helpful for me because I don't, I don't need, I, I don't do anything with that particular subject. Correct. But one thing is first I need to understand is any time I'm going to I'm going to call the particular subject with the ID or I'm going to tag all these details under with the help of the ID. So to represent the subject, what I have is subject ID in your site. The sponsor is where one or your, your entire team who is responsible for that who is going to provide the subject ID to you once you go with the enrollment. Correct? Subject ID is uniquely identifying the sub subject, which is a subject identifier. Am I correct? Because I'm going to use this particular one for capturing all the data against you. Obviously, it is going to be a character. Tell me the core. Required. Required. Tell me the role. Topic. topic. Why it is topic? Identifier. 
Okay. The focus, you remember, right? Every domain is going to have only one, only one topic variable that focus about the entire domain. It is a parent domain completely talking with the talking with the subject, talking about the subjects. So the role given to this is topic. Only one topic variable for the entire domain. Each domain has only one. For DM, subject ID is the, because it is talking about the subjects, the role for this is going to be the topic variable. Clear? Questions? All right. So subject is also, subject ID is also done. Uh, what are the other details you're going to collect from the subject? You, someone said it is going to be the age. Okay, age you are going to collect it. So, can we talk about the age? Simple, right? Age is going to have two variables, guys. Can someone tell me why it is displayed as a two different variables? One talk about the number. I'll simply say that age. I'll say 37. What is 37? Years, months, or it is going to be what? Correct? To represent the units, I have age units. Mm -hmm. Right. This is going to be age. This is going to be age units. First one is going to be the number because it's supposed to give the details. The second one is going to be the character. Now tell me what it is. Required or expected or permissible? Maybe expected. Yeah. Required. Why required? If you remember, when I show my protocol, I say that all the people who are having the range of 18 to 16, 18. all these are eligible only. Am I correct or not? All I need is, if these guys' age is between 18 to 60, I'm fine. 18 to 60 is fine, right? But between 18 to 60, any age, it doesn't matter to me. Correct or not? Keep this value. Right, I mandatorily need to know the value of the age. Age is the one I need to know. If you don't define the age also, I'm fine because I know that as part of your screening, you consider age. Only the eligible candidates has entered into the study. Correct? I want to have it. It is going to give me the details about, it is a good information I would like to have. If you don't provide this also, I'm okay. Because I know that you you already taken only the eligible candidates into the study. So having this number is going to be a good thing. Even if I have a missing value, I'm okay with that. Because the entire study is happening based on the inclusion criteria of your age. So it will become expected. Same is the case with this, expected. That is missing values are allowed. I need this. If you provide me the details, I'm quite happy. If you don't provide me the details, also, I'm okay with that. Now tell me what is going to be the role. Record. 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 Yes, you are going to ask your subject. Okay. This one. Variable. Variable. Wonderful. Variable qualifier. True. Sometimes, guys, what will happen is when you don't, if, if the subject don't give the age, but if the subject provided the birth date, if the subject provided the birth date, maybe I'll do one thing. I'll just keep it here. First, I'll go with the other one and I can come back to this. If the subject has given me the birth date, based on the birth date also, you can calculate this. So there is a, there is a calculation for that. That is, by the time you sign your informed consent, RFIC DTC minus uh, what I can call this, what is the other one? Your birth date, right? Your birth date divided by 365.25. You take the integer part of it for the whole thing. This you can consider as a date. So this you can consider as a age. If the subject has not provided you the age, but if the subject provided you the birth date and time in control or character format, your birth date you have provided accurately. In that particular case, you can still calculate your age doing like this. Make sense?
team is that clear in the event of age is not provided but still birth date and time is available then i can still calculate this right if the birth date is also not provided age is also not provided in that particular case i will leave it it is going to be still a missing value make sense now that's the reason i want to put this birth date and time in control character format at the first place here i'll put it this is date and time of birth date and time of birth ah, tell me it is a character or numeric Character. Character. Remember, yes, all the dates in the SGTM must be in the character format only. All the dates. So, character, which also requires a format. Correct? What is the format I should follow, guys? IS8601. IS I'm just leaving it here. That can be DT, that can be DA. Yeah, tell me guys, someone have a question? Uh, is it a expected or it is a permissible or it is what exactly it is? Expected. So my first preference is to the age. Age is not available in that particular case. I'm going with the birth date and time, right? So age is, itself is going to be expected means birth date, I don't mind. The subject birth date is not going to give me any value for my approvals. If the sponsor decided to give this, he can give. Otherwise, I don't need it. So even though if the birth date is collected, I can use the age as my factor. Age, I will use it for my submission, not the birth date. You understand why it is not? I'm not giving preference to this? Though birth date is there, I can calculate the age. Once the age is calculated, keeping this variable will not give me any sense. Keeping this variable will not give any sense to the reviewer as well. So it will become a permissible variable. And what is the role, guys? Record. No. Always look from the, you know, uh, your uh, reviewer point of view. I already calculated this here. I already have the age. If the age is not there, age is my primary factor. If anything that is going to support my age here is going to become my synonym qualifier. Because these two are representing almost same, right? Birth date I'm using to calculate the age only, right? If the age is given as a 36, right? I know what is going to be my RFIC DTC informed consent date. I can still calculate the birth date. It is going to be the replica of what I have in the before. So it is going to become a what is the other one? It is going to become my uh, synonym quality. Synonym. Make sense why it is synonym? All right. Now, let's keep these three here now. Okay. Under this, we talked about age details done. We talked about birthday details also done. What is the next thing? Vitals, we will use it, but vitals, we won't use it as part of our DM. DM doesn't require because all the vitals information will go to vital science domain, findings domain, because vitals you are capturing, you are, you, you vitals, the subject is not going to say, hey, my weight is 74. Subject will not say that. You are going to ask him to enter into it, just stand on your weighing machine and you will find it. Correct? Subject say that I am a six feet, but let's say that I am 5.9. I'm going, they are going to measure it. Anything which is under the measurements, anything as a result, that will go under the findings. So vitals will not be part of it. Is that clear why vitals are not part of it? Right, we will take it on the screening, but we will store them under the vital signs, not on the, not within the demographic domain. Clear? Then sex. All right, I'll take this particular one. Okay. Label also going to be the sex. It is going to be character. And uh, now you guys tell me what are the variable, what are the uh, things for this score and other details, please? Required. Required. Okay. Required. Mm. What else? Record. Are you sure all of Record. you required? Permissible. Why? Because I think uh, in some countries, you know, asking the sex of the people or recording it is not 
clearly legal. That's why. That's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah. You are viewer mandatorily need this particular information. Let's say that again. It depends on the study. Let's say I'm going with uh, some of the lab tests. You should not conduct some of the lab tests on the pregnant ladies. Though they are falling under 18 to 60, I should not conduct anything on them, right? Let's say some of them have a different results on the pregnant ladies. Or the efficacy is going to be different for the you know, male and it is different for the female for some of the drugs, right? I would mandatorily require this particular one. At any point of time, if you are not able to provide, you can, if you want to, you don't want to disclose it, I'm giving you an option not to disclose this. It is required. I should not have any missing values in this particular one. It is going to be the record qualifier because subject is the one which is, who is going to provide this. And here, I'll go with the format or code list. I can also call this as a control terminology. I'm allowing you a different values. It can be F. It can be M. It can be U. It can be undifferentiated. Only these are the possible things you can enter there. You cannot enter anything else. These are the only possible values I'm asking you to enter under the sex. I'm giving you the code list. You should follow the code list. <laughs> Clear? Now you, you don't want to disclose it. Don't disclose it. Use you. All right, but if you want to enter the sex details, these are the only possibilities. You cannot enter anything else because it is going to create ambiguity in my approval process. I don't want to encourage that. That is where your code list or control terminology comes to the picture. All the code list, the control terminology, you can download again from the SDTM. It's from the C disk, you can download that. Okay, race. Someone tell me, what about the race? Race of the subject? No. Character? No. Tell me, required, expected, or permissible? Required. Expected. Required. Required. Because for these also we have... Uh, for an example, uh, let's say that um okay american indian alaska native let's say both of both of them th those are their races right okay let's 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 like this american indian and black both of them are staying in us only both of them are going to be part of the study both of them are part of the study do i need anything or do I need any specific thing based on the race I'm going to approve them? For few people, yeah. the for few people, the efficacy will be good. Let's say that I have a black. This person has migrated to USA, let's say that a couple of years back, around 10 years back. But still his race is going to be success. So he's he's basically from the uh, you know. His race is going to be black, but do it? Do we need this information to approve? But some cases the efficacy will will be changed because of the genes, because of the you know their roots and all, right? So for few people the efficacy will be showing really high compared to the other people. To man to understand why for these people it is going to be little high or it is going beyond the limits. To understand that, we may use their race. We may use their ethnicity, but even if you don't provide that information to me, let's say race is unknown, I'm okay with that. I'm not going to take that particular factor for approving, but I'm going to use that particular factor for supporting. So it will become expected. Make sense? Why it is not required? And then again, it is going to be a record qualifier. And here also there is a big code list. The code list is going to be American Indian or Alaska Native, Asian, Black or Af African American, multiple, Native Hawaiian or other Pacific Islanders, unknowns, whites. All these are possible. 
Okay, so I'm going to share you the control list later. Even I can share you this particular notes. This also I'll share it with you. So for the other batch, I went like this. I went in an order, right? This also I can share it with you. You use this as a reference to understand and then to check all the variables, you can use this. Both of them will have the same information only. No doubt about it. <laughs> all right. So I have race, then I need to go with the ethnic. Uh, tell me, ethnic is nothing but ethnicity. Yeah, hmm. Character, no doubt about it, right? So here there is a code list, CT is there. Just I say CT, CT stands for control terminology. I'll say follow control terminology. terminology mm. so this is going to be ethnicity expected, expected. One. again why Same yes race. it's unknown it can be no unknown again when it comes to the race race is going to talk about the genes effects all other things correct when it comes to the ethnic, as per your control terminology, SGTM has given only two types, Hispanic or Latino, non-Hispanic or Latino. If not, not reported. No one has given me these details. If not, unknown. Only these four, Hispanic, Latino. If not, not reported, unknown. Right? Ethnicity details, it is almost you know, one layer top of your, on top of your race only. Am I correct or not? Based on the race only, you're going to see whether it is going to be your, uh, what is the ethnicity? Am I correct or not? Right? So what we can do here is, this one, your SDTM considered as permissible. If sponsor decided to give the ethnic details, I'll take it. But I don't use it for anything because I already have the race details to understand the gene effect. To understand the gene effect, I already have the race. I don't need to go with the ethnicity. That's the reason we will call this as a permissible. Age is done, race is done, sex, ethnic, birth details. Someone said medical history as the name itself is telling. All the medical history by default will go to the MH domain. There's a separate domain which is dealing with the ethnic uh, medical history already. And it will go there. All right. This is about your medical. Uh, so uh, I have seen in uh, DM data set many times, they collect baseline uh, diastolic uh, blood pressure, systolic blood pressure, or even diabetes, uh, I mean, diabetes level or sugar level. So, I mean, uh, in what, uh, it, it is the sponsor who decides what all will go in DM. No, 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 one second. DM will not talk about your baseline at all. But I have seen these uh, variables like uh, at screening, what was, what was the uh, blood pressure and sugar. You might be seeing a supplementary domain, supplementary DM, not the DM. Because look at this. These and all the variables which are going to be part of your DM. There is no scope for adding, you know, Diabetes details or any uh, findings details. In Adam data set, uh, so it will be derived. Yeah, you are looking at the Adam, not at this uh, SDTM. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. SDTM is only for mapping, and you don't have a scope for, you know, adding your baseline and everything. No way you can add it. That is ADSL you're talking about. Subject level analysis data set. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, when you go with the Adams, we'll do that. Adams is going to be a combination of multiple SDTM domains. Your DM is going to be the major. You are going to detail, get the details from EX. You are going to get the details from uh, VS. You'll go with the uh, death details. You'll go with the AE. Almost like that depends on the study. 10 to 15 different domains you are going to combine there. That is ADSL, not at all DM. All right. Up to this is clear. Can we go with the next one? Uh, what is the first thing here? Enrollment. Under the enrollment, what I have? When the subject actually signed the informed consent. Correct? This is the, I can say that 
when originally the subject signed the informed consent, that is what we are going to take it here, right? So this one you can call it as, so this is subject during the screening, subject details. All right, after the subject details, what we have, we have the next thing, which is nothing but the enrollment. All right. So under the enrollment, what are you going to have it here? Let's talk about this only one variable, RFIC DTC. This you can call it as date and time of informed consent date and time of informed consent when the subject is signed that date you are going to take it as yeah informed consent again it is going to be a character it is a character and again from here onwards all the dates, 90% of your dates are going to be expected only. Good to have them. Even if you don't have it, I'm okay with that. Not at all required. Then it is a record because you are, whoever is taking the enrollment, that particular person is going to provide this. And it's supposed to follow your IES 8601. Correct? This is your enrollment. Okay. <laughs> randomization so during the randomization what will happen you are going to be assigned with the different arms that's the diagram that i have shown to you right you will be assigned with the different arms so for each arm you need to have the details that is treatment details i can also say that treatment details when you are collecting this at random Correct? Okay. Start with this. What and all I'm going to have it here? What and all I'm going to have it here, guys? Plan statement details. No, here I'm not looking at the dates. I'm looking at this diagram. Look at this. Once they got randomized, they are going either with the control group or intervention group. What is the arm? Arm details alone I'm going with. Okay. Oh, I, I call it as a, a treatment arm details. Let's say it as arm details. So it would be clear. Yes. One is, I, I told you that there are two things, planned and actual. So planned arm code. We'll give a short name always that you can call it as a code. We'll give the detailed description that we can call it as a planned arm description. So one is going to be the planned arm code. Another one is going to be the planned arm code description. Description of the planned arm. Same thing. This is what you planned in the trial design domain. In the trial design itself, before subject enrollment, everything itself, you decided this. But actually, how you implemented? Have you implemented the same? Or are there any changes? So, planned ARM code is ARM code, AMCD. Description is ARM. Actual ARM code is ACT, ARM, CD. No variable name should not cross eight characters. Actual description of the arm is ACT ARM. All these are characters. All these are expected. Right? Now, tell me about the rules. Arm code you are getting from the... Yeah, investigator. Record. Uh, how about arm and actual arm? Synonym? Exactly. Wonderful. Because these two are synonym, right? Because already there is another one which is representing the same. That is the reason these are synonym. Up to three or two guys, these four is sufficient. 
up to SGTM implementation guide three dot two. Remember this. Three dot three between three dot two and three dot three. When it comes to the DM, three dot two has twenty eight variables. Three dot three has thirty variables. Two new variables are added. Those two new variables are came to support of this. The two variables that I'm going to talk now are came in the effect of supporting these these arm details. Those are nothing but arm n r s. This is called any of the arm that is planned arm or actual arm. If it is null, you need to give me the reason for that. Right? Let me tell you why these are nulls also. Okay, what is that? This is nothing but a reason arm or actual arm is null. Why these are null? Again, it is going to be a character. Again, it is going to be expected, right? It is again, you're going to collect this information from your investigator. Now the thing is, I have 30, okay, 100 subjects entered. All the subject information there only, right? Correct. But out of this 100, 20 are screen failures. If these 20 are screen failures, will you consider these 20 for the randomization? Team? No. 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 Obviously, what is going to be the arm for them? Screen failure. Yeah, it is going to be a screen failure. That is the reason, right? Uh, the reason is no. going to be the screen failure. No. But it, by anyways, it is going to be null, correct? No. Right. Arm, actual arm, these values will be populated only if only for the assigned subjects. Anyone who are screen failures, you call them as the unassigned subjects are the screen failures. For the screen failures, the arm will not be populated. Yes or no? Right? So to capture those details, I'm going to have this variable. In the previous SGTM 3.2, we don't have this variable. You need to ask the reason for it. Why we don't have null for this? Maybe by looking at your uh, uh, treatment arm is null. That can be any reason, but we, do, we are not capturing that before. But now to make it more meaningful, to avoid the ambiguity in 3.3, we introduce this. So here we'll give the examples. There is no code list here. You only have the examples. Screen failures, not assigned, uh, assigned, but not treated, not randomized. They have not come for the randomization at all. Unplanned treatment. All these, there are multiple reasons for that. This is going to be a free code. That is going to be a free text. There is no code list for it, but all the reasons you are going to capture here. Then you got one more variable you got one more variable, right? To give these details, that is ACT, ARM, UD. That is description of unplanned treat actual arm. Description of unplanned treatment arm. Mean to say, we planned only two drugs, right? Let's say placebo and a study drug. For one of the guy, for one of the guy, uh, what I can call it as, this arm and actual arm are not same. I mean to say, you want to go ahead with, first I want to go with drug A, after that washout period, after that placebo, after that, drug A. Uh, maybe I'll just give some more details. Drug A, 50 MJ I want to give. Then placebo. Then same drug A, 100 MJ I want to give. And then placebo. This is how I want to go. This is a crossover study. But what happened is, this is what you planned. This is your arm. But when it comes to the actual arm, for some reason, you started this particular guy with drug A with 100 mg, then placebo, then drug A with 50 mg. What happened? Your order of your elements changed, right? 
your treatment details are changed, right? This is what you planned. This is what your actual is. Your planned and actual is not same. Give the reason for it. Why? Why it is changed? That is what your actual um, unplanned description, right? As per the plan, you haven't moved. This is what you planned, but this is what is the actual. What is the reason for it? You need to support the reasons. All these comes under your treatment. That is treatment arm details. Team, is that understandable up to this? We pretty much covered 19 variables already. We just have 11 more variables. But so far, all of you are able to understand. We just draw the design here. As per the design here, movie, that's it. All right. Now, let's go with the treatment. That is actual treatment dates. I can call it as a treatment dates, date details. Uh, this is one of the area generally people struggle. I'm talking about in general. I'm, I don't say that everyone will get struggle here. But the thing is, this is one of the area which will, you know, test you, right? But we'll try to simplify it. We don't we don't make it as too hard. We try to simplify this and we try to understand in a easiest way. Okay. Now, so under the treatment, guys, there are a bunch of dates. Dates will be available. There are so many dates available. But we need to go with all the dates in detail. Number one, remember, there is protocol defined drug. What is that? Protocol specified treatment, protocol specified drug. That is one. Any drug that can be concomitant, it can be any supporting. Suppose if I want to go with one of the guy, I want to give the study drug tomorrow. Right, but after the study drug, I also want to give some therapy to him. I mean to say that after the study drug, it may it may be uh, too much of body pains or other things. I want to give some physiotherapy for him. Physiotherapy also included here. So there are two two things will come. Two things has come now. Right, one is going to be the protocol specified treatment, which is nothing but my original treatment, study drug or study treatment, followed by some other treatment that I have planned. That is not the rescue. Rescue is something like your adverse event. Adverse event happens with rescue. But I'm just making sure that patient, for the patient comfort, I'm giving you the supporting treatment. That is not concomitant. It is a supporting treatment. To differentiate this, we have four dates. Number one. Date and time of first study treatment. Remember, this order only you remember it. Date and time of first study treatment. This is as per protocol. Whatever you define in the protocol, protocol defined drug, if you are giving it, that too for the first time you are giving it, you can call it as planned reference. RF stands for the reference. X stands for exposure. ST stands for start. D stands for date. T stands for time. C stands for character. Reference, exposure, start, date, and time in character format. What is that? Reference, start, date, and time in the character format. First exposure, I can simply say that. First exposure to the study treatment. It must be character. Again, all the dates expected, and it is going to be recorded. But what you need to understand, this is first exposure to the study treatment. When the treatment is started, that is what your RFX STDDC. You have one more domain, which is going to capture all your exposure. That is your drug details, all the exposure drug details to capture that. You have one more domain. You have one more domain. What this domain will do? It is also going to capture all the exposure details, right? In this, I have some variable called exposure start date and time in character format. Exposure start date and time in the character format. Remember, these two must be the same. 
these two must be same. What are the two things I'm talking about? Number one, first exposure to the study treatment. Number two, exposure details from the exposure domain. Both of them should be same. Again, for these two, for these two, the data will be coming from the drug accountability domain. There is another domain called drug accountability, DA. Drug accountability is the domain which is going to capture all the drug details. That domain itself, I'm going to use it for calculating RFXS TDTC. The same domain only, I'm going to use it for the RFXS TDTC. Is that clear? Calculation part. Again, based on the drug accountability, the exposure start date and time in the character format reference first exposure to the study treatment must be the same. Once you complete all your domains, if you validate it, these two must be the same. If these two are not same, you are not doing the right thing. Is that clear? All right. So my treatment is there for five weeks, let's say that. In the first week, first time I have got RFXS TDTC. Last week, I'm going to have the end. So now date and time of last study treatment or last time you exposed to the study treatment protocol defined drug that is going to be RFX instead of ST, I'm going to have EN. Yeah. That's the only difference. First time you are getting exposure, last time you are getting exposure. Again, when you come to the exposure domain, I have EX, ENDTC. This must be same as your RFX, ENDTC. So the source for these two is nothing but drug accountability, right? This is where I'm going to maintain the log of my entire drug. This one, I'm going to use it for the your calculation of these two dates. All of you are clear. Can I have a confirmation? Yes. Okay. Now there are yes. two more. Yeah, there are two more date variables now, which are in the similar lines. RFSTDTC, RFENDTC. All right. Now, uh, can someone tell me what it is going to be? Any idea? Reference drug. Here also have the reference. Okay, let me tell you. Subject. Actually, the, the, uh, uh, go ahead. Actually, the drug taken by the subject. The what do you mean by actual? Means there is a difference between, um, uh, as per the protocol, the subject uh, cannot attend at, at the date. Means today the subject take the drug, so but unfortunately is, like is the, the visit is drug? missing. <laughs> good, good, good. One by one. One by one. Okay. The visit is missing. Mm, you're you're saying correct. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, Means uh, as per the protocol, uh, today the subject take the drug, but he is not attend at the time. I uh, mean, not visit the clinic at that time. So to, if, if he visit the clinic tomorrow, so uh, he take the drug take tomorrow. So it is recorded as the RFSTDTC. Okay, remember this, RFSTDTC and RFENDTC are planned. These two are planned. I expected the subject to take the first drug by 11th June 2023, that is tomorrow. Let us say morning 10 a.m. I want to take this, but I want subject to take this particular drug, right? But what happened is for some reason, he haven't appeared by 10, right? But he appeared somewhere around, uh, you can say 11 o'clock. Both the cases he's taking the study drug only. One is planned, another one is the actual. This is what the first time the study treatment has taken, all right? But the thing is, majority of the studies, remember this, this is where the confusion will start. Remember this. This is what I reference. This is what, this is the time you're supposed to start your treatment. This is the time you're supposed to end your treatment. I planned this. 
some studies what will happen is if if the subject has taken in the same time by rf stdtc rf stdtc both of them are going to be the same if the subject has done ended the ended the treatment on the same day on the same time i can also say that rf x e n d t c and rf e n d t c also remains going to be the same majority of the studies these will be the same but in some studies what will happen is by rf s t d t c i won't use it for you know capturing the start date and end date i don't capture for the starting the treatment start date i won't capture there instead i will use it for the different purpose because these two matters for me related to the study drug these two matters to me because these are dealing with the accurate actual study drug details am i right or not these two are capturing about them right so these two it's up to me how to use them mean to say sponsor can decide or your statistician can decide how to go with them okay so some studies under the rf st dtc instead of taking the study uh, your treatment start details you will use this particular one for all other details something like you can use this particular one for uh taking care of your when the subject randomization is done because in my dm i don't have a variable to represent the date of randomization ideally i need to depend on the disposition domain instead of that if i want to capture those details i can also use that when the subject randomize that randomized date i can use it under the rfst dtc right sometimes the subject you know go for the multiple reconsents if there is a change in the protocol the subject need to give the reconsent generally the reconsent details and all will be part of your supplementary domain but instead of that i am going to use my rfsttc to capture that remember rfxsttc rfxendtc should be as per your implementation guide rf stdtc rf endtc you have a relaxation you can use it as per your wish make sense if not this is the reference start date this is going to be the reference end date am i clear so whatever starts with rfx that are the actual actual first dose when that your subject has taken actual okay. last dose when the subject is completed that is proper study drug details are here first dose and last dose okay rf stdtc rf endtc you use for any purpose in general these are going to be subject reference start date and time subject reference end date and time you can use it for any purpose 90% of the cases you will use your rf stdtc for capturing your reinformed consent dates capturing your Uh, data of randomizations or any other date details when it comes to the rf endtc when it comes to rf endtc 90% of the cases it is going to be equal to your rf x endtc only okay in general guys normal logic rf x stdtc rf stdtc both of them are same rf x endtc rf endtc will be the same if you don't have any deviations if you are not using for any other purpose makes sense or not but what matters to me these two clear everyone can i have a quick confirmation yes wonderful then why it is expected it can be permissible right uh, like you are using it for different purposes wonderful this is what is expected from the reviewer side reviewer need to know have you given any other study treatment or any other supporting treatment i can use it let's say that i told you the physiotherapy after the treatment i'm giving a physiotherapy to the subject that is also included so i'm ending up my with i'm ending my dose after physiotherapy only so when is the physiotherapy completed for the subject not only the protocol specified drug any other thing you are giving to the subject as part of the treatment i want to capture them as well for that i can use it that is the reason it is expected i am not saying it is required again 
if it is mandatory required i need to go with the I, mandatory required for the approval i go with the required but if this information is going to be helpful for my approval i can say expected not at all required i'll go with the permissible make sense so this given as a expected by sdtm so the relaxation is available how you want to use it it is depends on the statistician if not xs dtc st dtc x e n dtc e n dtc will be the same make sense arun what arun or amar is that making sense yeah good now so four dates are completed so two of them are related to the treatment or oh, sorry all four of them are related to the treatment now again i can come back to this start date end date details are done follow up based on the follow up what i'm going to have end participation date am i correct so when is the subject participated in the study for the last time that is a date or time of end participation data time of end participation all right so this one is call it as rf reference p participation e n d end e n is end date and time character format again it is going to be character it is going to be expected it is going to be the record qualifier for all of this i should follow my is86101 as a format okay that is when is the last time so the calculation will be different for this right i need to capture everything the calculation will be different for this when you go to the project that is tomorrow we will go with the project there i am going to tell you how it will be different suppose there is no surprises there is no surprises there is no additional treatments there is no i'm not i'm using strictly rf my start date and dates properly can i say that rf x e n d t c rf e n d t c will be the same from there plus or minus two days or plus or minus whatever period is going to be your end participation date correct after my last treatment i'm asking subject to come for the follow up after 30 days so from my end participation date 30 days is going to be my rf p e n d t c clear or not anyways that derivations we are going to do it tomorrow all right come back to this this is also done now i can have the exceptions right what are the exceptions the subject made it correct or not subject made it so if the subject is dead i need to update the details right because during the study that is one of the most common thing not, i should not say common thing that is one of the thing that may happen so we need to always be prepared to report those details as well correct so that is nothing but death details i want to share the death details there are two variables which are going to share these details number one is the subject alive or dead ah uh, when the subject is dead date and time of death number two if the subject is dead i need to give a flag if they have a flag i can easily filter it out correct so subject death flag right so date and time of death dth death date and time in character format death flag dth ff death flag so both of them are going to be expected both of them are going to be character and both of them are going to be record qualifiers only can i say both of them record right yeah yes right these are my death details done what next if you look into this almost everything then exceptions also done for okay death details i can get it from multiple places from ae domain i can get it there is going to be a separate domain called death details from there i can get it there is one more domain called disposition from there also i'll get it indirectly if the adverse event is equal to death then that adverse event end date i need to capture it 
if the disposition data set ds term is equal to death that date i can take it again if the death details test code dd test code you will come to know all this once we complete all the domains don't worry d test code that is also is equal to death oh, sorry not death code guys dd original results the results of your dd domain is equal to death again that date i can take it so these three dates along with death date and time all these four must be the same i'm giving you the links where and all each one domain with the other domain will be linked i'm showing you while writing the code again i'll show you and again <clears throat> when we go ahead with the all the domains completion there also you will come to know this for this you should follow the control terminology it can be yes or it can be null it can be yes or it can be null that's it only two things so so far how many of them are completed 26 four more variables are there so what are those four more variables right let's talk about that from the c disk and derivations first of all i need the domain which domain i'm talking with domain abbreviation character required am i correct or not domain is required right and it is going yes. to be uh, what it is domain is going to be identifier variable it is uniquely identifying your domain go with the 10 sides 20 sides wherever you go it is same dm domains dm domain only and remember it has a standard value dm no changes this is domain okay what else i required i told you here you have a subject id to represent it what is the subject id have you written it or not here it is right you have a subject id to talk about it what if other domains how i can map it because my other domain may not have the subject id my other domain my subject id repeated more repeated for more than one record in that particular case i need some unique identifier right to map all the domains correct exactly bagya you are right so there you are going to bring, bring one thing usubj id unique subject identifier character required identifier, identifier. yes this is identifier all right so for this what it is is generally unique subject identifier is it is a common variable used to identify subject across all the domains in every domain wherever you want to identify a subject this is what you are going to use it it is a derived variable remember this it is a derived variable you are not going to capture from your crf from or anywhere it is a derived variable you generally need to follow a specification excel for it one of the most commonly used derivation is going to be most commonly used i can go ahead with concatenation of three variables study id, study ID. Ah, go ahead uh, subject ID. Subject. site id and subject id so which study it is which site it is which subject it is these three concatenation you'll go this is most common but you can follow your specification example. some people won't consider site id <laughs> right within your study how do you identify your subjects this is the key one very important one because this is the one which is going to help you to map your dm domain with the other domains clear okay look at this one more time 28 two more are there here you collected the subject details right right so when you collected this during the screening screening generally not one day right i'll give you a window hey screening you start from the first june you need to finish it by 10th june this is your screening period complete this screening for all the subjects let's say i have four 400 subjects in my study i have 10 are the my uh, what i can call it as a staff 10 staff cannot complete all the 400 in a single day 
correct? So, but this in within this window, you have to complete it. Let's say for one subject, you collected this on first Jan. For the another next 50 subjects, you do it on the second June, like that you conducted. So when you collected this information, so all this information, when did you collect from the subjects? You need to capture that, right? That information is also required, right? So that is nothing but, this is for your record, DMDTC. Date and time of demographic data collection. Date and time of collection. When did you collect it? When the demographic data was collected from the subject. Character. And it is when you are collecting, so timing. Guys, now tell me, required, expected, permissible. Required. Sorry? Required. So this is my window. Sometime back, I told you, 1st June to 10th June. Based on which date you collected the information, am I going to approve the study track? Or based on that, any parameters will change? No, so expected. No, again, that, that's the reason I'm going with the second one. Based on this, let's say, if the subject is coming from, you know, a different region, let's say he's actually, his race is going to be a black. By default, he's having little stronger genes, right? Let's say if the person is coming from Asia, right? It is expected to have, when it comes to the vitals and all that stuff, he is expected to be a little short compared to the others. I'm not doing any racism, guys. I'm just telling you, right? So the parameters there will be helpful for the approver to see why the efficacy will be done or why the numbers are slightly different when it compares to the other person. That is a supporting structure. But within one week of screening period, which is given by the sponsor to me, I can take this on any day, right? I can take it on any day, right? Right? What day it takes, it is not going to change it. His race will not change, his birth date will not change, his age will not change because age I'm calculating based on the RFIC DTC only, right? Nothing is getting changed because of this when I'm collecting. This is my reference for sponsor reference. Nothing to do with your study, right or not? All of you accept? Permissible. Do you accept or not? Tell me, guys. I think it will deal with your end submission. Right. Last one, last variable, which is nothing but DMDY. For every domain, you are going to calculate one thing that is study day of collection. Study day of collection, mean to say, for everything, I take one reference, guys. Generally, the reference is going to be RFSTDTC. This is my reference. Let us say my RFSTDTC is going to be 10th June today. Compared to this particular day, when you completed the date and time of collection, suppose you do it on the same day or you do it before this 10th day. Let's say my window is going to be 1st June to 9th June or 8th June. This is your screening time. By this time, you have to complete it. Suppose if any person has completed the screening, has completed the study day of collection for one subject, it happened on the 1st. It happened on the 1st. That is, it happened nine days before my reference. Am I correct or not? This is my reference. It happened on 9th, nine days before it happened. For one person, it has happened on 8th June. It happened two days prior to my reference. Correct? Compared to my reference date, when this happened, to know those details, you will use your study day of collection. Again, purely internal. But tell me, is it a character or a numeric? Team, character or a numeric? Numeric. 
because I'm calculating the difference day. I'm calculating which day compared to my reference day on the same day you did two days before, 10 days before, after five days, after 10 days, like that I'm calculating. It is a number. Permissible purely for my own purpose only. Timing because I'm calculating the dates. It is a derived variable. What is the generic derivation? This is there is a standard derivation for this. What is the standard derivation? The standard derivation is going to be, I'll write it here. DM dy is equal to demographic data collection my, minus standard. What is my planned? RF, STD, TC. That is every time, every domain, wherever you are calculating the study day, RF, STD, TC is the only reference. Only the date and time of collection will change. Nothing else will change. Plus, greater than or equal to this. That's it, guys. DMDTC minus RFSTTTC plus DMDTC greater than or equal to RFSTTTC. Ideally speaking, this one, what is going to happen to this DMDTC greater than RFSTTTC? If it is on the same day or if it is DMDTC, the collection happened after your RFSTTTC, then it is going to be one. Else it is going to be zero. Correct or not? This greater than or equal to this outcome, either it is going to be zero or one. Am I right or not? Mathematics are, if it is confusing to you. This is a simplified one because I write a macro for this. That is the reason I prefer this. If not, what you can do is when DMDTC is greater than or equal to RFSTDTC, if that is the case, you can calculate your DMDY like this. DMDY is equal to DMDTC minus RFSTDTC plus one. If not, when my DMDTC is lesser than RFSTDTC, then DMDY is equal to this whole thing, this. That's it. To combine these two, I write this. When it is going to become one, if it is greater than or equal to zero, this condition is true, this will become one. If it is less than, it will become zero. You don't need to write anything. Either you can follow this or you can follow this. Even in the coding, you can follow the same. Is that clear to all of you? Is this understandable? Now I will ask you, I will ask all of you, do you need to memorize anything? You are only going with the process. After that, you're just simply following that. Do you need to memorize anything, guys? I hope so, it is no. If it is yes, tell me. Maybe require practice. Uh, definitely, see, it will not come out of blue. I don't say that. All you need is, you know, you need to know this. You need to remember this diagram. If you know these two, your game is over. Done. All right. I may stop here today and we will continue with the coding tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll complete the coding for it. So you're going to get a lot of understanding about it, how you're doing and all. All right, tomorrow we do that. You happen to have a sample row data set. I just I'm wondering how that might look like. Uh, that's what we are going to do tomorrow, right? Okay. We are going to build all these variables tomorrow. We are going to create a data set for it. That's what the objective for tomorrow. There is actual arm data search. A C A actual arm. Mm -hmm. Is it spelling mistake? <sighs> Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. All right. There one doubt uh, in crossover studies, uh, how we we'll take the RFXS to the same. First exposure, 
it can be your placebo it can be of your study a it can be of drug a drug b okay. anything first exposure so if it is placebo also we can consider anything. it as ah, okay. anything okay. so in dm uh, ttc collection day Hmm. So, if it is permissible, wearable, how will we calculate? Is it uh, not required for the study to calculate uh, uh, DM D one? No, my question so, is not clear. Repeat it. So, if DM D T C and uh, DM D Y are permissible, wearable, hmm. so is it not necessary for every study to calculate the DM D Y? Not required. This is purely for our sponsor only. Sponsor want to see when I have collected it. This is nothing to do with your, uh, you know, submission. This is nothing to do with your uh, reviewing. Always, you are going to decide the core based on based on how it is required. What is the impact of this particular one for the reviewer? From that perspective only, we are looking. That's what I keep iterating it. You are going to decide the score. Or uh, who is this? Uh, I can say that. Mm. Cedis decided this particular one from the end user point of view, the reviewer point of view. This hundred percent required for your reviewer to need this information. They will say required. It is good to have expected. I don't at all require. Sponsor want to keep it, keep it. Otherwise, I don't need it. Also, right? In that particular case, I'll go ahead with the permissible. It is decided by the Cedis from the. Purview of your reviewer, not from our end. Is that making sense? What I'm trying to say, or you want me a different explanation? Good. Good. Okay. Good. Good. Uh, what we're we going to have is a, a flow for uh, all other uh, domains also. Uh, not flow? for no, not for every domain you can get this flow. Luckily, we can have this particular one for DM. But what I do is I try to simplify. I I try to create this particular flow for every domain. I try my best to do that so that it will be easy for you to remember. I try to use this approach. Okay. okay. So generally, for every batch, I change the approach. This is for the last batch. I went in this way. Then I thought that this is okay, but having additional details would be good. Maybe it would be difficult for people to understand everything, uh, to remember everything. So I decided to go this way. All right. So I'm going to give you both this one as well as this one. So you can have the standard definitions here and you can have the flow here. This is to understand. This is to follow. Right. I try to implement this for all the domain. That is what my objective for this class. Okay. 